Welcome to Mission on the Mountain. My name is Kevin McCall, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about prophecy. When you were baptized into God's family, you stepped into the role of prophet, priest, and king. And so oftentimes, we don't go for that full potential as a prophet because we don't even know that we can. But in Acts chapter 2, when P Peter was teaching the, the people who were just experiencing this outpouring on Pentecost, he said, today, the prophecy of Joel has been fulfilled. And that prophecy that he is quoting says that the Lord will pour out his spirit on all flesh and that your sons and daughters shall prophesy. He says, my servants, my sons and daughters alike shall prophesy. You shall all prophesy. So guess what? You are a prophet. And sure, there are different levels of prophecy. And just like natural gifts, some people are just naturally better at math and some are naturally better at, at language. And that's okay. But everyone has the potential and needs to know at least basic math and utilize that skill. And the same thing with prophecy. You are part of all flesh, so you shall prophesy. And a beautiful thing is that in Revelation chapter 19, verse 10, we're told that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So speaking up on behalf of Jesus, sharing a testimony about Jesus, who he is, what he's done in your life, speaking truth, this is prophecy in the very basic, basic form. You shall all prophesy. On the day of Pentecost, the believers were filled with the Spirit, and they spoke, they prophesied about the wonderful things that God had done. And in that, they were also calling forth the future. They were teaching, they were preaching, they were speaking that potential of God into other people. And we're told in 1 Corinthians 14 that one of the main purposes of prophecy is to build up the church. It's to bring encouragement. It's to bring confirmation perhaps to what God has already been doing in your life or sometimes to confirm that God really does know you. It talks about that they will hear you utter the secrets of their heart and they will realize there is a God. This is the whole point of prophecy. Prophecy is always to point people to Jesus, not to the prophet. So sure, we've all heard wacky people who speak in the name of the Lord, who call themselves prophets or prophetic. And I think sometimes that may scare you away, like I don't wanna be cuckoo. And that's good, that's okay. But I wanna ask you, do you stop spending money and paying the bills and buying groceries because there's counterfeit money out there? because there's people that have mishandled money, misused money, have fake money, that doesn't stop you. You want to use it in a good way, in a healthy way, in a way that builds up you and your family and is an aid to others. And that's the point of prophecy. So I want to encourage you, don't be afraid because you've heard false prophecy or have seen prophets that are cruel or crazy or whatever. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And prophecy is to help others know that Jesus loves them. And how will they know if someone doesn't tell them? And how beautiful when it comes from the heart of God that oftentimes prophecy and a word of knowledge sort of work hand in hand, that the Lord the Holy Spirit will share information with you about a person that you wouldn't otherwise know. And then when you give them that word, you're giving them that prophetic word of knowledge. And they're like, wow, how did you know that? And you get to say, I didn't. God does. God knows. So in the last episode, I talked to you about learning to hear God's voice. So in a way, prophecy is then learning how to share what you are receiving. 
sometimes the Lord will give you a prophetic word just to pray with. It's just for you to know that he gives you an insight into a situation and he's calling you to begin to pray for the situation, the person, but you're not called to deliver that word. So it's very important as you're beginning to hear from God, you ask, okay, Lord, why are you showing me this? Why are you telling me this? So then you can respond in that next step of obedience, whether it's prayer or speaking the word out or journaling it, whatever that next step might be. Because a word given out of season or with the wrong delivery can be just as dangerous as a false word. So it's important, yes, to discern what we're hearing and discern prophetic words that other people are sharing or giving us. But Paul, when he was speaking to the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, in verse 20, he said, do not despise prophecy, but test it. Just test it out. Retain what is good and reject everything that is evil. So it is important as we're sharing what we sense the Lord might be saying that the other people are always encouraged, this is for you to pray with. This is something that I feel like the Lord is showing me. This is something for you to pray with. Let him help direct you and guide you through that. And that's how you begin to grow um, in the, the level of basic prophecy and safe prophecy, that you avoid those directional words. Perhaps that you've been praying for someone and you feel the Lord is calling them to be a missionary in Africa. But the way that you could approach that rather than say, God says that you need to go to Africa, then that's really kind of that forceful. And as a beginner, it's much better to, as you're praying for the person or sharing the word, gosh, as I was praying for you, I was just sensing there's something about Africa. And so, Lord, I pray that if indeed my brother and sister is somehow connected to Africa or you have something for them in Africa, God, I pray that you will show that to them, that you will help them see any connection that you have between them and Africa. So that's the way that you're able to share that knowledge, but inviting the person into the discernment process rather than telling them, this is what you should do. So we call that just avoiding directional words rather than thus says the Lord, do this, do that. You're just inviting them in. Wow, I'm sensing something about whatever the particular is. Like think about the vocation of marriage. Instead of saying, okay, Charlie, you're supposed to marry Cindy on March the 15th. You pray, Lord God, I thank you that you have the perfect vocation for your son, Charlie, and that you are helping him to grow in that. And Lord, I pray that any other people who might be part of this vocation, that you will bring them into the picture at the right time and you will help them grow together in faith, hope, and love according to your purposes. So again, the way to pray into Charlie's vocation of marriage without telling him, you need to get married on such and such a date. Now, obviously, as people grow in prophecy and there are gifts that are the higher level per se, that there are times that there are those directional words, but those still have to be tested out because at the end of the day, it's not about the prophet or the word. It's about you and Jesus. And so just remember, prophecy should always, always, always point you back to Jesus, to growing in faith, hope, and love, in character and virtue. Never about following the prophet or building a ministry, that sort of thing. It's you and Jesus, and that's how you keep yourself safe as you begin to grow in sharing these prophetic words with others. I remember one time a friend coming to me and she said, Kevin, I had a lady come to me and say, I see this death spirit following you, but don't worry about it. She said, what do I do with that? And I thought to myself, well, we really need to pray for the woman who shared that because that was so ridiculous and damaging. And thank God that you are mature enough to know that you should probably discern that rather than walk around with fear. Because when someone says there's a death spirit, but don't be afraid, unless you just think, okay, woman, you're crazy and 
don't worry about it. That's easy to plant fear. Like, okay, what do I do this with this? And so in that particular case, I said, well, that was a very terrible delivery. I said, <laughs> either two things. She should have, if she'd seen that, just quietly prayed for you and not even bring it to your attention. Or if she felt it was something that there needed to be an agreement with, she would just pull you aside and say, hey, would you mind if we prayed? And then if you're comfortable with that, that you pray. And here's a beautiful thing. It's like you always pray the opposite virtue. That's a great way of prophesying. Like prophesying in one sense is calling forth the full plan of God. So what God intends. So if the enemy is indeed, if there really is a death spirit chasing you down, please don't misread and, and go around being afraid or, or thinking, gosh, you know, these people are so cuckoo because they're screaming about spirits. It's like, there are definitely evil spirits that can try to attach or harass you. And sometimes there are just like goofy people that have no clue what they're talking about. But in this particular case, it could well have been that there was a spirit trying to come against this particular woman because she is a beautiful anointed woman of God with a young family and lots going on. So there's the potential. But so I said, in that case, what we would do is just, if you agreed to prayer, we would just pray that opposite virtue. And, and so praying like this, Lord God, I thank you that you promised life abundant for your children, that you came not to condemn the world, but that the world through you might be saved. So Lord, I thank you that you have conquered death, hell, and the grave. And I thank you, Lord, for the way that you continue to deliver your daughter from everything that would want to come against her and bring death. And Lord, that you just lift her up into life. I thank you that my friend is such a woman of life and that she moves in the fullness of life in you, Christ, that she has been died with you and has been raised with you. And Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. So this is the way that you can pray prophetically at a very basic level, but still call forth the life and the truth of God rather than instilling fear and like, oh, this demon's chasing you. It's like, you've been given authority over the demons in Jesus Christ. And so don't give them so much power. Don't acknowledge them as much as you acknowledge Jesus Christ and his blood that sets you free, that heals you, that rescues you, that you get to appropriate and, and walk in the fullness of your inheritance. So that's a very important thing. Just another story to help demonstrate this point of just praying the opposite virtue. There was a time that I was at church and saw this lady who I really felt she was suicidal. I just had this sense. I mean, she didn't say it, but I could just kind of feel like, wow, I, I think that, that perhaps she's suicidal. And so I asked the Lord, okay, Lord, what do I do with this? And again, took some time to wait. And after the church service, I approached her again. Now she was a perfect stranger. I didn't know who she was. And I said, excuse me, ma'am, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Kevin. And she gave me her name. I said, I know this might sound a little bit funny, but when I saw you earlier today, I was praying and I felt like the Lord just said that you are going to live, that, that you are full of life and that you will live. And she broke down in tears. She was just sobbing and she looked at me and she said, three times this weekend, I had a gun to the roof of my mouth and I was going to pull the trigger. But I said, Lord, I'm going to give this one more chance. Thank you. So then I was invited into that space to particularly pray for her, rebuking a spirit of death, speaking life, speaking the love of God into her, and also helping connect her to other resources that might help her grow and, and move beyond that, that point of just difficulty and despair. So, so important. Like the Lord, through his prophetic words, are not out to shame and condemn us, but it's to call us into freedom, to call us into hope. I pray prophetically with people all the time. And it's interesting how many people who've never experienced uh, prophetic prayer before 
are somewhat terrified. And oftentimes they're afraid that God is going to show me their most horrible sins and that I'm going to call them out and embarrass them. And, and sometimes God does show me sins that they're struggling with. But rather than saying, you're a porn addict and God hates you and you're going straight to hell, it's because oftentimes when I'm praying with, with people, I do sense that there's a struggle with porn. But the way I get to pray into that is to say, I get a sense that you're having a struggle with images and always just stuck going back to these images and images. But I thank you, God, that you have the power to set your children free. And so I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, if there's any image struggle right now, that, that this is broken and bound in Jesus' name and that my friend gets to, to grow in greater holiness and experience her victory. And oftentimes afterwards, if people are comfortable, then they will explain that, yes, I was involved in porn, that sort of thing. But again, it's the grace, even if we're being shown someone's sin, we call them higher, call them beyond. We can suggest, well, if you're really in a, a sin struggle, it would be great to go to receive the ministry, the sacrament of reconciliation, that this can be an important thing. But as a prophet, we are called to bring correction, but correction that does not bring rejection. And that's important. We all need correction at times. This is how we grow and how we mature. And a true sign of maturity is that we can accept correction without taking it so personal and without being, oh, rejected, oh, this person hates me because they said that I needed to speak more clearly. Well, no, they don't hate you. Maybe they have a hearing issue and it's their problem, or maybe you do need to speak more clearly. It's so easy to get offended, but offense drives us away from God. Forgiveness, kindness, love draws us closer to God. So this is important as a prophet that we, even when we're called to bring correction, or if the Lord is showing us something out of line in someone's life, that we approach them in a way that continues to bring them back to Jesus. Because you may all prophesy. And you might be thinking, well, now those Old Testament prophets, they were doom and gloom. But that's not true. They were doom and gloom if you don't turn back to Jesus. And that's the truth of the Bible. I mean, it doesn't take a prophetic word for us now to know that because we have the full gospel. And the gospel says that there is a lot of gloom and doom for those who turn away from God. But for those who love him, who follow him, who do their best to keep his commands, there is life abundance, provision in the here and now, along with suffering, that we find the abundance oftentimes in, in suffering. So please don't hear that I'm preaching the prosperity gospel. It's like Jesus learned obedience through suffering. So we suffer and that's where we learn the abundance of God in the midst of the difficulty. This is where we find him faithful. And this is where sometimes those prophetic words can really help. That Paul told Timothy, make war with your prophetic words. You know, fan into flames these gifts that you've been given. Don't forget who God is and what he said. And the Bible, you need a prophetic word, you've got it. Scripture is inspired by God, by the Holy Spirit. So all of these words are prophecy. You can prophesy scripture to one another, prophesy scripture to yourself. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This is a declaration. This is prophesying what the Lord said or what other prophets have said. And you're picking that up and you're coming into agreement with it. And this is just, as I'm saying, barely scratching the surface. But we feel here at Mission on the Mountain, it's better just to give you these small snippets to, to sit with, to, to, to grow in, and we'll keep building. So these are just prophecy basics. So as you 
continue to learn how to hear God, I encourage you to practice speaking it out and recognize you're going to make mistakes. Wow. <laughs> how many mistakes did you make in learning those math problems or writing your papers that you had to do? It's like mistakes is part of learning. And if you ever want to grow into your full potential as a son or daughter of the Lord, you're going to learn from mistakes. And that's the important thing, that you learn from them rather than be shut down by them. Don't give up. Test it out. And Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 14, seek the gifts. This is a good thing to do, seek the gifts, especially prophecy. Especially prophecy. Because prophecy exists to build, to encourage, to confirm, to reconcile, to bring people deeper and deeper into the heart of Jesus. As you prophesy, it's not so much about the depth of the knowledge that you have, it's the depth of love that you can share. So prophesy that love, even if it's a hard truth, Give that truth with the heart of love and watch what God will do through you. God bless you, my friends.